you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello, my friends. Welcome along to another video on FIFA 20. It is a series where we not only recreate real life systems, but also I show you how to adapt them so that they will actually work in FIFA 20. From 18 here, if you didn't already know that, welcome to the video today. We've worked our way through many systems so far during this series, and today we move on to one that has been another heavily suggested uh, tactic f by you guys. That is Eric Ten Hag's Ajax system. Predominantly known for its high pressing and possession based philosophy since joining from Utrecht just over two years ago now, he has installed and continued the values of what Ajax believe in and that is you know, the total football-esque philosophy with a little bit of tweaks here and there. Known for its 4-2-3-1 formation, although can slip into a 4-3-3 should it be needed to, very much there to dominate the game, dominate possession. So. If you haven't watched any of these videos before, then what we do is I'll show you all the position adjustments, go through all the instructions, all the tactics. We'll replicate the system, but uh, when there are little tweaks here and there uh, that I make personally to adapt it so that it will work in game, um, you know, I will point that out to you. So first of all, we'll go through all of the positions. You want to get your 4 2 3 1 formation. We go 4 2 3 1 wide. FIFA has it as the narrow, but they're going to be a little bit too central um, to replicate this true system. So you want to change it to 4 2 3 1. And you want to make a couple of addition, um, well, ad adjustments to the uh, base positions as well. So, first of all, with the fullbacks, what you want to do with these is actually move them up a little bit so that they are in right and left wing back positions. Now, we've done this in a lot of our videos, and the reason being is that if they're changed to wing backs instead of the regular fullback positions, you'll find not only do they get wider into wider areas, but also they'll get further at the pitch. They'll, you'll see them getting to the byline more, etc. Basically, when one of the holding midfielders receives the ball, preferably Martinez, the wing backs should have gone past him. They should have overlapped him, and they should be offering that um, you know, forward pass option. Whereas if they're fullbacks, you tend to find they're a little bit more rigid. So you want to move them to wingbacks. And the other position changes, you want to change these from left midfield and right midfield up to wingers. So it is still that 4-2-3-1, but uh, in-game it's actually going to play uh, like it does in, uh, in real life. So, as I say again, these will get into more advanced positions. You'll see them getting in behind more, and that is going to be part of the instructions as well. They'll be further at the pitch, and they're going to get wider when they need to. So that's the system you're going to be looking at. Next, we will move on to the instructions. We'll go through each one. First of all, with the goalkeeper, as you would expect in a possession-based tactic, we'll be sweeper-keeper, um, you know, because obviously they're playing a high line. If they're going to send balls over the top, the goalkeeper is the final line of defence. So you want to change that to sweeper-keeper. And then also with the crosses, it's very much hit and miss either way. I personally change it, and this is where we occasionally adapt it so that it will work. I personally change it to come to crosses because they're fairly hard to defend in FIFA. Um, and when the goalkeeper's coming for crosses a lot more, it just makes it easier for you to defend uh, the corners. It would relieve a bit of pressure off you. So change the goalkeeper to uh, come to crosses. The two centre-backs, absolutely fine. You don't need to change anything here. Um, one thing that I do point out in every single video, I'll do it again today, um, interceptions. You might think that you change them to aggressive interceptions because of the fact it's a high-pressing mental uh, tactic, but you actually want to keep it on normal. If you change it to aggressive, unless it's particularly specifically specified by me that you need to change it to aggressive, keep it on normal because otherwise it's just going to drain on your stamina a little bit too much. And, you know, I might bring out a video um, on how to preserve stamina in game uh, in FIFA 20 because I've had a lot of comments of people saying that their stamina drains a lot easily do I have any advice on how to sort of stop it um, so I'm hoping a video out on that as well so uh, keep an eye on that so yeah the centre backs are absolutely fine then we move on to the full backs of course you want them not only to join the attack but also overlap as well very self explanatory any attacking system you're going to find that the full backs are going to do this generally um, you know, something, say the Man City tactic that we looked at very first of all in this series. Um, you know, we did have one where they'll, uh, they have inverted fullback, so they'll tuck in a little bit more sometimes to try and prevent the counter attack. But in the Ajax system, they're very much about um, overlapping, joining the attack, providing another option. 
and allowing the wingers then to cut inside because they then provide the width. So you want them on during the attack on overlap. Now we move into the centre defensive midfielders. Two different roles. Van der Beek is more that box-to-box -box man and you find him getting forward a lot more. Providing a lot of uh, options going forward. Um, and he does sneak a few goals as well. So he's the boxer box man, whereas Martinez is more um, trying to fill out that Frankie de Jong role that, of course, was vacated with his move to Barcelona. So we start off with him. First of all, of course, you want him to stay back while attacking. He's that pivot. Not only in defence does he offer that protection, because, of course, the likes of Van der Beek, Ziyech, and the three front men are getting forward with the fullbacks. But also... He's that sort of uh, pivot, possession pivot, where you know you're able to recycle possession through him because he's just picking up those balls if you need to restart and go again on the attack. So you want him to stay back and also change this to man mark. Now this isn't a specific instruction as part of this system for Ajax, but I changed the holding midfielders to man mark personally because you tend to find in FIFA that with the opposition when they run, when their midfielders are running on into the box. Um, and providing another option, um, you know, to score, uh, you tend to find that your midfielders don't follow them as much, don't mark them. So, say if they're cutting inside the opposition, crossing it in, um, you'll have three men in the box, three opposition players in the box. So, you want to change to man mark, then they should be following their runners um, and you should be keeping it tighter at the back. So change that to man mark. And also you want to keep this on cover wing as well. What should happen is, let's say if on the left, Promes, Taliafico, they've committed forward. Then all of a sudden the opposition are going to break. Martinez will cover that space on the wing. But then Van der Beek should shift over. So you won't find those gaps in those near areas. So keep that on cover wing. With Van der Beek, of course, a little bit different. He's a box-to-box -box man. So you want him to get forward. As it said, make runs behind the strikers. So you'll find him really playing that role well, particularly as a holding midfielder. You, some people might think that you want to change this to a centre midfielder rather than a centre defensive midfielder, but then you won't have the option to man mark and you won't find him coming deep enough in defensive situations as well as getting in the box. So, yeah, you want that on get forward and again, cover wing on the other side. Again, if Van der Beek covers that space, then you'll find Martinez shifts over and, um, you know, doesn't leave too much space vacated. Moving on to the attacking midfielder now. This is usually Hakim Ziyech. Of course, they do rotate. Sometimes he plays on the wing. Neres drops out. You might find Labiad coming in. But in this system, we're using Ziyech with Neres on the uh, right wing. So with Ziyech, actually what you want to do, so he gets into the box of one, he provides another option. Generally, you find Tadic drops off as well, plays that false nine role, which we will come on to. Um, so with the likes of Van der Beek, Ziyech, and then Promes and Neres getting into the box as well, that's sort of your outlet. So you want him to get into the box. But then on defensive support, you might think come back on defence, but actually it's more basic defence support. You want this to be balanced. You tend to find a lot of the times he'll stay forward with Tadic, and then you have the sort of engine men behind him in Martinez, Van der Beek, of course the defence as well, sort of doing the work for him. Only sometimes will you find that Ziyech is actually going to track back um, saying games like against Chelsea in the Champions League you tend to find him tracking back a lot but um, saying league games against Utrecht they recently played um, you know generally he was uh, staying forward a little bit more although he did uh, sort of vary out onto the right wing more in that game so you want that on basic defensive support moving on to the wingers now First of all, come back on defence. That's very self-explanatory. You don't want to leave your right and left backs exposed and getting doubled up on. But it's important to stress, this is a possession-based tactic. So for a lot of the time, for 60, 65% of the game and more, you should have possession. So they shouldn't be relying, you shouldn't be relying on them coming back and tracking back all the time. They shouldn't have to. You should be winning the ball high at the pitch and then maintaining possession. But you do want that and come back on defence just in case. Moving into chance creation, you want him to cut inside. Not only does this mean that he provides options for short passes and maintaining that possession-based sort of system, but also it gives the space for the fullback to overlap him and then get him behind as well because that's how they really penetrate teams. Um, you tend to find wingers in these possession-based tactics with a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1 three, three, a formation. Their wingers are generally going to get him behind, utilise their pace to try and penetrate defences. 
And with support on crosses, get into the box for cross as well. You don't want to leave someone like Ziyech isolated. So you want other options. You want Van der Beek storming in. Say if Tadic has dropped off, you want Neres storming in. You want Promes storming into the box. So these are the instructions for both of them. Come back on defence, cut inside, get in behind, and also get into the box for the cross. We're going to do that either way as well. And it's important to note that um, these two guys, Promes is right-footed, Neres is left-footed. Ziyech, when he plays there, he's also left-footed. They're very much tailored to cutting in on their stronger foot. That's how um, you know they provide a lot of options on goal. That's how they provide a lot of threat and goals in, in general. So um, you know, do bear that in mind when you're working with this system. Um, but, you know, again, Promes he has four star weak foot, so you could put him on either side and it would be fine. But like I say, just bear that in mind. Now, moving on to Dusan Tadic, as I say, he's very much a false nine type player. He'll drop off and, um, you know, create the options for midfielders to run overlap him and run on into the box. So you want to change his attacking runs to false nine for a start. In terms of defensive support, you want him to stay forward. He shouldn't be tracking back. He is going to be that out ball and that focal point of the attack. And then in terms of support runs, you want him to stay central as well. Now, as a winger, he's sort of a converted winger, played at attacking midfield, now he's up front, etc. You might think that you want him to drift wide wall and get into those sort of more spatial areas, but actually, even staying central, he provides um, sort of a nightmare nuisance for... Um, for the opposition centre-backs because then if he's staying central and he's dropping off, they don't know whether to go with him or stay in their area and then either you're going to get the option to create space if they follow him or if they don't, he's going to pick up the ball deeper um, and then he's got a whole range of options to work with. So you want him to stay central. So that completes the instructions. Now we move on to the tactics. First of all, with defensive style, you want constant pressure. I have already done this, so uh, I won't, uh, won't change it. So with defensive style, you want constant pressure. Again, very self-explanatory. It's a gig and pressing possession-based tactic. They are always going to try and pressure the opposition, not only as soon as they lose a ball, but in general, um, you know, they're just so keen on and, and based around just keeping the ball and having the ball. So when they don't have it, they're going to chase it as much as possible. In terms of defensive width, now in real life, you tend to find Ajax defend very, very wide. They leave a lot of space um, sort of in between their defenders to try and get out to sort of the the wide men, uh, stop crosses, etc., to give themselves more room to sort of cover ground. So you're looking at something like seven, but actually what I want to do is lower this down to five. That way it's adapted slightly so that it's more, um, you know, likely to work in FIFA. Again, you can get away with a width of five. You don't want too many people running in between you. Particularly if you're playing online, you tend to find a lot of people will try and exploit those spaces in between your defenders. The fullback and the centre-back, the two centre-backs, etc. So if you move this down to five, that's something you can get away with. But it still replicates the fact that they try and defend fairly wide. And they don't want to be tucked in and limited by, uh, you know, something like this. So keep that on five. And of course, depth... As high as possible, you want a maximum of 10. That's how, what you have to do if you want to be a gag and pressing style team um, and you always want to keep control of possession. You have to have a high defensive line because otherwise you're going to leave too much space um, in between each line of defense and you're also not going to be able to press them high up the pitch um, You know, if you don't. So you want that on 10. Moving on to offensively now, of course, possession-based offensive style. That is simple and self-explanatory in terms of the width i moved this down to four now the reason being is that as soon as it goes to three it becomes a very very narrow now that's very much tailor-made to a possession-based system but they do tend to sort of drag out their passes a little bit more sometimes you'll find um, there's a lot more space in between each player so if you move that to four it will become a little bit more balanced but it's still got that sort of emphasis on that sort of short passing game in terms of players in the box, move this up to seven. The reason being is that you're definitely going to have three. You're going to have Van der Beek in there. You'll have one or two of the wingers, a Ziyech in there. So there's four right there. And you might have the likes of the fullbacks whipping the ball in, etc. 
And then in terms of corners and free kicks, we keep this on four. Always move it up to four. The reason being is that then you'll have two men back, which is more than enough because the opposition are definitely not going to leave more than two men up front. But usually they only leave one man up front for set pieces. Um, and then it gives you enough options in the box to actually be a real threat from corners. If you have it free, there's just not enough men. There's too many outside the area. So move that up to four and it will be very much a working system for you. Well, guys, that will just about round it off for this episode. And again, another tactic that I absolutely, uh, you know, love covering, um, you know, these sort of systems really sort of get the blood flowing. I think a lot of you are going to enjoy um, sort of playing with this system. Uh, you know, it's certainly one that I've um, had a few goes with in the past. Not not only for, for this video, but also generally FIFA 20, FIFA 19, etc. Really um, had a play with systems very similar to this. And, um, you know, it's always one that I enjoy. So, um, you know, I hope you guys do enjoy it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about the system, about anything you, you want to know, anything more you need to know. Um, just get at me in the comment section and uh, I'll do my best to get back to you. I'll reply to uh, as many comments as I possibly can. Uh, don't forget to leave your suggestions by the way got absolutely loads still what trying to work through the list very very gradually and uh slowly making my way through it but i am trying to get around to um you know all of the suggestions i have loads like i say so i uh, just trying to work my way through but keep them coming in um and you know i'll be sure to uh to try and get around to them if i can don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more regular gaming content, including my FIFA 20 career mode series with AC Milan currently in the second season. But there isn't loads of episodes out yet, so you should be able to catch up with them if you uh, if you do get the time. I would really appreciate that. On that note, we are going to finish it off there. Leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. Let me know that you are enjoying it, uh, and then I'll uh, keep producing more. And on that note, we are going to finish it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Come on.